chemical and empirical formula are two very foundational concepts and they're essentially different ways of describing a compound that can both be used to answer questions related to that compound. So the chemical formula is what the compound actually is. So if you were to count every single atom within a molecule, you would get the chemical formula for that. So here we have glucose and its chemical formula is C6H12O6. And so if you were to isolate a glucose molecule, these are the atoms that you would actually find within it. To get to the empirical formula, you essentially divide the chemical formula by its greatest common factor. And so for all of these, these can be divided by six, and what you end up with is an empirical formula of CH2O. This is a very common one that you'll see, and empirical formulas are often very helpful with grouping for this reason. This is a carbohydrate, carbon plus water, and glucose is one of your more famous and common carbohydrates that you'll encounter in chemistry classes. And the empirical formula for glucose is the same one that's shared by a lot of sugars and a lot of carbohydrates. They all have one carbon for every two hydrogens, but they only have one oxygen for every carbon. And so this is useful for grouping different compounds into categories, but it's also very useful for being able to solve problems where they give you percent by mass of certain atoms within a compound, or they ask you to draw conclusions based on the empirical formula that can help you isolate and figure out what chemical you're actually dealing with. And so we'll go through a few examples of those. Working from an empirical formula can be very helpful when you encounter questions that involve percentages by mass, but they don't tell you the molecular weight or atomic weight of a compound. And so here's a sample question that you might encounter on the MCAT or in a chemistry class or on a question bank. And it says that a compound is 73% oxygen and 27% carbon by mass. Which compound could this be? And so we're going to work through this using the empirical formula and then that can clue us into a series of potential chemical formulas that this compound could have. And usually in a multiple choice test, those answers will be provided to you and only one of them will apply. There are a few compounds you should know the mass numbers for offhand. And those are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Carbon has a mass number or atomic weight of 12, and that is 12 measured in AMU, atomic mass units, or you could say that a mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams. Oxygen has a mass number of 16, nitrogen has a mass number of 14, and hydrogen has a mass number of one. So those are four that you'll likely be responsible for. From these percentages, we can then work our way to the empirical formula in a relatively simple manner. So we have to find some number that is a multiple of 16, the mass number of oxygen, that fits neatly into 73. And a lot of times you won't find that. But the options that we have available are going to be 16, 32, 48, or 64. We could go all the way up to 80, but if we go to 80, we're exceeding this number here. So we'll start with 64, and 64 is about four oxygens. Let's just leave a note right there that 64 is four oxygens. And 27, because that's carbon, we will then divide that by 12s, and so our options are 12, 24, 36, and the closest one to that is going to be 24. And so we'll say 24 here, and that 24 is equal to two carbons. And so notice that we, with four and a few oxygens, we get our way up to 73, and, and 24 and a little bit of an additional carbon, we get our way up to 27. So we're looking at something that has some allocation that involves four oxygens and two carbons. And so we then will simplify that into something with a empirical formula of CO2. There are two oxygens per carbon. Now, looking at the answer choices, you'll often be able to deduce that it's only one compound 
or they might give you a mass. They might say that it's a compound that has a mass of 44 grams per mole or 88 grams per mole. And then you can just scale this empirical formula up. So the compounds that you could be dealing with that would be described this way would be something like CO2, which is carbon, carbon dioxide. You have C2O4, which is oxalate. You could have C3O6 and so on. And the way that you'll answer a question like that once you find the empirical formula is that it will be the only answer choice listed out of your eligible multiple choice answers or they will tell you the mass of the compound and then you'll just have to figure out which compound, whether it's CO2, C2O4, and so on, whichever one has the mass that you're looking for. So oftentimes when you see percent by mass, but they don't tell you the mass of the compound, then you're going to use empirical formula as a way of getting to your correct answer. Other times you might encounter a question where they give you the mass of a sample of the compound or they just give you the compound's atomic weight and your job is to then deduce from percentages what the compound is. The nice thing is that if they give you the mass of the compound and the percentages, then you can go straight to the chemical formula rather than having to go through the empirical formula. So here's an example. The question is, half a mole of a compound has a mass of 46 grams. If the compound is 39% carbon and 61% nitrogen by weight, what is the compound? And so we'll work through this step by step and then it will become fairly straightforward. So the first thing we have to do is realize that we only have half a mole, but we have a mass of that. But remember that atomic weights and atomic masses are measured by the mole or they're measured by the AMU uh, per, per single molecule. And so we will need to double this number in order to figure out the grams per mole of a compound, which gives us its atomic weight. And so we'll take this 46 and we will double that and that turns into 92. And so 92 is the molecular weight of the compound or the atomic mass, you could say, of the compound. And those 92 grams are then going to be divided into some number that's 39% carbon and some other number that is 61% nitrogen. So if you were to do these calculations, you would end up with something that had around 36 grams of carbon and 56 grams of nitrogen. And those are the numbers of grams that we're working with. And so now all that we need to do is simply divide it by the atomic mass of carbon and divide this by the atomic mass of nitrogen in order to figure out the overall ratio of, of carbons to nitrogens here. And so the 36% 36 grams, we will divide by 12 for carbon, and so that will divide neatly into three carbons. And this 56 will divide by 14, which is the mass number for nitrogen. And dividing that by 14 gives us four nitrogens. And this is true that it is the empirical formula, but because we know the actual mass of the compound and we know the mass of an entire mole of the compound is 92 grams. We can deduce the exact chemical formula as well because this information is given to us. So a lot of times if you find the grams per mole and that's being given to you, then you can go straight to the chemical formula. Our chemical formula for this is going to be C3 N4, and that is the exact compound we're looking for, not just the empirical formula, but also the chemical formula.